Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spellweaver. My name is Boltor, and it's Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's another set of brand new secret cards. Shh, it's a secret. Don't tell anyone, because they don't want anyone to know. Let's see. The three secret cards will be from well from a well-known theme. Maybe your favorite tribe will become really good with these cards. Who knows? Thank you, Nicholas Cage. Thanks for giving us some tribe cards. All right. So tribe cards makes me think shaman elves um goblins vampires soldiers those kinds of things so probably see i'm thinking a new shaman totem maybe a new like elf or goblin and maybe something having to do with soldiers or humans or vampires okay so again haven't seen any of these cards i don't know anything about what they do i haven't see, even seen any card art for it so let's see now if i remember correctly First things before I want to do this, there were two changes. Yeah, okay, so there are two changes, two balancing changes that I want to go over real quick. First things first, um, and the other the revered was tweaked ever so slightly. It's now whenever you play a creature card from your hand this turn, draw a card, which means that uh, you only get one card draw off of Brothers in Arms. So it makes hopefully makes hate bears just a little more balanced. You know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't reward you quite as ridiculously. Uh, the other one I showed you kinda sorta in the, my quick check. Drela is now three mana instead of four mana. The big, she has the exact same ability, exact same cost and stats and everything else there. She's just three mana instead of four mana. But what that means is that she's now able to be used by Keanu, which means that you can bring her out as a 4-5, which means you get to kind of pull her back for a turn, and yeah, probably make it makes her a lot more playable, and I can't wait to see what people do with that. So I know you guys came here for new cards to see the secret cards, so let's dive right on into that. There are three of them. Let's see what we get here. Oh! Totem of the Moon. Well, we finally got stuff other than Wolf Tongue in Shaman in another aspect, which is nature. So, luckily for us, nature is going, or we have, you know, something to kind of blend shamans with. Whenever an allied shaman enters the field, you may pay one energy you um, to give all creatures you control plus one plus one until end of turn. That's really good because it allows for shamans to actually kind of have some sustain and some kind of burst as opposed to just hope playing the swiftness totem hoping it survives and then going shaman shaman maybe and then kind of swinging with that so this is actually really good for shamans because not, it's two mana one aspect and it gives them the ability to kind of because you can play like a bunch of you can play this you can play like a bunch of elves or something some you know almost kind of like a zoo thing and then the shaman you play the shaman you know maybe you play the three two vanilla or the um disciple of zash for the pings and just playing the shaman allows you to trigger a board wide buff it's like uh what's that one the tr the trumpets the one the the order card that basically does the same thing but this allows you to trigger it and it allows you to trigger it multiple times so it gives you some sustain. Now, what the hello? Gurko Tribe Shaman. Well, I said goblins and I said shamans. I said we probably see another totem. We saw another totem. We probably see shamans and we see a goblin, another goblin shaman. But this one's in nature. So it's a two mana, one aspect, two, one speed, two. Pretty standard for goblins. You may play Ginkgo Tribe Shaman under a creature you control to put a might emblem on that creature. When that creature leaves the field return that's really weird but i really like it um so you can to put a might um, so you can basically attach him to a creature give that creature plus one plus one and when that creature dies a shaman you get to basically get another shaman so it's kind of like infected survivor but kind of backwards if you get my meaning it's kind of like you play this on top of a creature and it gives them kind of, you know, when this creature dies, summon a 2-1. That's also a shaman. So, and that would also trigger sh Totem of the Moon. So you could potentially sacrifice your guy for, oh, I don't know, sanct um, 
Stronghold Metropolis, get this shaman out, t trigger a totem on the moon, and who knows, just, this is, I'm, you know, rage nature shamans are going to be everywhere once these cards um, are available to everyone, or everyone has them, so you, could, you can expect me to definitely be tinkering with some kind of rage nature shaman deck. Oh, here we go. This, 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 right? Yes, this is exactly one of the things that I was saying that shamans really needed. It's a, I, I saw the name, I saw the picture, and I knew exactly what it did before I even read it. This, whenever an allied shaman enters the field, you may pay one to transform Totem of Ragnarok into a 3-3-1 three, 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 one speed creature until end of turn. So basically it allows you to have do, you know, you play the shamans and you get a creature in play. You know what I mean? You get this big dude that can attack along with you, along with your shamans. Now he's not a, he's a, a to an orc totem, so he's not a shaman, he doesn't trigger the other totems. But, so like, you, you know, you sacrifice a creature, you get this guy, or you trade in, this triggers here, and... You know, uh, you know, there are definitely options there. I can't really think of a whole lot of like combo right now, but I'm sure I will. So, a uh, dark portal. This guy, I mean, he's a two mana. Let's put it this way: Would you pay two mana, two aspect for a three mana three one lamp? Yeah, you probably would. Um, considering the fact that it can it dodges removal a lot like the way lamp does but it's not as oppressive as lamp was so yeah this is a really interesting idea I'm really glad that it's a thing all right so let's so I got two of these guys four of these guys one of the rare all right so it's more or less just opening the packs now all right there's another one of the, this guy do 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 do, do. Oh, look, it's a Drela. Huh. Okay. So I didn't even get any of the new cards in that pack, but I guess that's fine. Alright, there's another one. So I've got three copies of this guy, and I'm pretty sure I finished playsets of everything else. So. Let's go cards. Alright, so I got three of this guy, three of that, and... So I still need another wolf tongue, but that shouldn't be a problem. But either way, so those are the new cards. Really excited to give these a try. I'm really thinking you could do something along the lines of like, you know, you play Firebrand Goblin because pretty much every one of your shamans except this guy are goblins. And, you know, just kind of like I said, just kind of like a kind of like a, a rage nature zoo deck where you're trying to maximize the effects of totem of the moon and maybe even like lightning totem or totem of legends you know totem of legends for card draw temple to totem of the moon for just big buff up and yes these will stack this is not a legendary so if you have multiple ones in play and you play a shaman all of a sudden this one's plus one the other one's plus one the other one's plus one so you're giving plus three plus three across the board these are going to get way out of control really quickly, and this is definitely going to be something to, to, you know, build around. This guy's really good. He's just a two-mana shaman. And I think put under, putting a card under another one removes all statuses, emblems, and attachments. When a card leaves the field, the card under it goes to the graveyard. Okay, so you have to play him under a creature from hand, so you can't go from the field under a creature, at least as I understand it. And even if that creature is bounced or um, back to your hand or put sent back to the deck by landslide, then he comes out onto the field because it's when the creature leaves the field, doesn't have to die. So he's really good. This is really good. And this is good, not really good. It's not... Like, the fact that it's a 3-3-1 three, three, speed means it gets blocked by just about everything, and it's not, you know, going to destroy your opponent. But if you trigger this first, it becomes a creature, then this buffs him, you know, it can, it can definitely be something. And I guess we'll just have to see. So expect something about a Rage Nature Shaman deck 
later this week, I should think. Um, I am starting something for, I'm starting the, I guess, paperwork, you can call it, for a new job working for um, kind of the state. There's a lot of paperwork. So um, I'm hoping to get back to two vi um, videos a week, but there is still a huge announcement coming out. I know some people pretty much know what that means, but I'm not going to say it just yet. would like to remind everyone that the Spellweaver Masters Championship is July 10th. It will be Fuzz and I streaming it, you know, casting it, the same thing we do every week. Please give, donate. You get, you know, little care packages for supporting us or for supporting the players. We don't, me and Fuzz don't actually see any of the money that comes out of the, the prize pool, but, you know, the prize pool will be available or open to donations even during the tournament. So if you're watching and you think, oh, this is cool, let me donate 10 bucks, then by all means, go for it. There is a custom uh, special card back, special unique Masters Championship card back for reward um, for donating over $100 if you feel so inclined. And would love for everyone to help support the championship. Basically, the more you guys support, the more, I guess, like legitimized the game gets. That's probably the wrong word for it, but you guys get what I mean. And the more you help push Spellweaver towards being a, an official eSport, which is pretty much the goal. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you like the if you like the cards, comment. If you hate the cards, comment. If you like the video, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, the whole nine. I do this channel just for all of you. And yeah. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Thank you so much again for watching. And as always, may the cards rise to meet you and bring good RNG to your enemies, enemies.